Hello everyone, we are from student group discussion B2. I'm going to present about our student project and Adele Santoma. Here are our group's members. This presentation will consist of three chapters. The first one is introduction, the second one is literature review, and the last one is conclusion. My name is Igusti Ayu Ika Pangipani Pedanti with a three last digit on student identification number is 064 to the, to tell you about a brief background of Santoma. Localized labor deposits within an organ system are known as Santoma. Despite naturally being night, Santoma is a significant indicator of systemic diseases. Santoma develops as collection of bone cells that can be found underneath the skin. It can appear anywhere on the body, can usually be found in skin, tendons, feet, and eyes. Santoma itself is an disease, while it is an early manifestation of systemic disorders due to lipid abnormalities processes in the body. There are many conditions that are said to be related of developing Santoma, such as diabetes, uh, liver cirrhosis, pancreatitis, and metabolic disorders, and also the certain cancers. The underlying diseases which lead to Santoma may have early and high mortality rates. Therefore, an early diagnosis and immediate, immediate treatment of the underlying disease are needed to reduce the development of Santoma and reduce mortality and morbidity. Due to its service condition, we are interested in discussing this topic and has reviewed the most recent literature of Santoma. The problem formulation of this student project are what is the general overview of Santoma? What is the epidemiology of Santoma? What is the etiology of Santoma? What is the pathophysiology of Santoma? How to diagnose Santoma? What are the differential diagnoses of Santoma? How to manage patients with Santoma? And how is the prognosis of Santoma? The objectives are to understand general overview of Santoma, to know the epidemiology of Santoma, to know the etiology of Santoma, to understand the pathophysiology of Santoma, to understand how to diagnose patients with Santoma, to know the differential diagnosis of Santoma, to understand how to manage patients with Santoma, and also to know prognosis of Santoma. The benefits are, for theoretical benefit, the student project is expected to increase the understanding about Santoma and serves as a literature for future researches and reading references and dealing similar cases in the future. For practical benefit, the student project is expected to increase the knowledge of healthcare professionals about Santoma so they can apply it in daily life or work, life decently. That's all from me. Thank you. Next. Hello, my name is Igedi Gorafatawinata with three digit student education number 061. This presentation I will cover about general overview of Santoma. Tendons are skin disorder characterized by deposition of lipid on the skin or tendon, show as plug or nodule. This condition not disease but a sense of abnormality on lipid amount or lipid metabolism. Pathogenesis involve the formation of foam cell, which is any phagocyte resident cell on the skin, which is contain lipid. Diagnosis based on clinical manifestation and underlying lipid disorder. Based on clinical manifestation, San Thomas can be classified into six subtypes. Number one is eruptive San Thomas, which is seen on patients with high triglyceride level. Tuberosome San Thomas, which is common on familiar genetic. Tendinous San Thomas is seen on patients with elevated LDL level. Palma San Thomas, seen on familiar genetic. Tandem San Thomas, seen on patients on primary biliary cirrhosis. And Santelasma palpebrum, seen on patient with dyslipidemia. This is our some family genetic which is related to some Thomas. Number one is autosomal dominant hypercholesteremia, familial dysbetalipoproteinemia, beta-citosteromia, and cerebrostenius tantomatosis. That is all for my presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Yusefina Grislataji with last three digits to ID number 087 and I will going to explain about the epidemiology of Santoma. Santoma can be found in patients with metabolic disorder. Santoma can appear at any age but often occurs in patients above 50 years old and second decade of patients with familial hypercholesterolemia. 
Tenino San Toma have been found in approximately 75% of geriatric patients with familial hypercholesterolemia. And the most common type of San Toma is Santel Asthma. Because it a re- retrospective study in Swiss ophthalmology department demonstrated that among over 5,000 benign cutaneous neoplasm of eyelids, they found approximately 6% were central asthma. And there are also equal prevalence of male and female in Santoma disease. Okay, that's all from me and my friend will continue the explanation. Thank you. My name is Kutuni Dekusadi Wirahadi with last three digit of student ID number is 028. I would like to present about the etiology of Santomas. So Santomas are caused by the presence of excess blood lipids such as cholesterol and triglycerides in the body. Excess lipids may accumulate beneath the skin and manifest as Santomas. The presence of Santomas can point to serious underlying metabolic, cardiovascular, and lipoproliferative disorders. Santomas are associated with hyperlipidemia, specifically elevated LDL, triglycerides, and or cholesterol. People are most likely to develop Santomas if they have another, more severe health condition that causes an increase in blood lipids. Some of the risk factors of Santomas are the condition that can increase the risk of dyslipidemia, such as fat rich diet, lack of exercise, smoking, alcoholism, and certain diseases such as diabetes mellitus and hypothyroidism. In addition, a family history of dyslipidemia and a history of using certain drugs such as estrogen or steroids are also included as the risk factors of dyslipidemia as well as Santomas. That's all from me. Thank you. Next. Hello everybody, in this opportunity, I would like to explain the pathophysiology of Santoma. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Iputu Aptikawada Mayoga, and my student identification number is 20025110884. Okay, let's get started. Pathophysiology of Santoma begins with the movement of lipoproteins LDL out of the vascular system and into the interstitium in hypolipidemic state. LDL undergoes oxidative modification and macrophages take out oxidized LDL with greater affinity than other salts via their expression of scavenger receptor. Furthermore, LDL is metabolized by macrophages and ultimately foam cells are formed. After that, foam cells are deposited in the dermis, subcutaneous tissues and tendons and finally xanthoma is developed. That's all for me. The presentation will be continued by my friends. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anggia Madatrian Devi with last three digit of student ID number R088. I will continue the presentation about the diagnosis of Santoma. The diagnosis of Santoma can be made clinically by identifying the morphology and distribution of the lesion. However, in some cases, histologic examination may be necessary to confirm the diagnosis. When taking anamnesis, history of hyperlipidemia, stroke, myocardial infarction, or pancreatitis are important to us because these diseases are often experienced by hyperlipidemic patient, which is the basic cause of Santoma. The sign and symptom of Santoma in general is the presence of lesion in the skin in the form of macules, papules, yellowish nodule, or plaque. Several types of Santoma can be classified based on the clinical manifestation that appear. The first one is Santelasma. Santelasma is the most common type of Santoma. The lesion characteristics are small, soft, yellowish in color, non-tender, and non-pruritic papules, usually distributed bilaterally and symmetric around the eyelids near the inner canti. The second one, tuberous Santoma. The lesions are solid nodules, red yellow in color, often classical to form multilobated tumor-like lesion, and are painless. Third, tendinous Santoma. It is a type of Santoma in the form of a slowly growing subcutaneous nodules up to 3 cm in diameter associated with tendons of ligament. The fourth one, eruptive Santoma. The lesion appear as small multiple red-yellow papules with an erythematous base, tender, and usually pruritus will appear. Next. Right, continue from Anggi. Now, I'm, exp- now I'm saying our lemon with last three digits of student ID number. One to one, we can explain about the other ty- three types of Santoma. The next one is Santoma disseminatum, which presents with red papus and nodules with a predilection and reflection. And the next one is Palmar Santoma, which characterized with nodule and irregular yellowish plaques involving the flexor region of the fingers. 
and the next one is Tanum Santoma, which is Tanum with uh, flat uh, macules and slight elevated text with yellow stand or orange coloration. The spread of UC may be across the tights and the cubital and popliteal space. Next, uh, when the diagnosis of Santoma is still unclear, then we can do a histopathological examination, maybe through a skin biopsy. Uh, those histopathological features uh, of all types of Santoma uh, are actually similar, uh, but those numbers of uh, phagocytes, uh, lipid deposition, and also inflammatory cells may also may also vary across the types of Santoma. The next examination is lipid uh, profile examination because many people with uh, Santoma usually develop it from this lipidemia. Although um, not all patients with uh, Santoma uh, come from this lipidemia. The next one is imaging test. Uh, it's actually very rare to use uh, di to do diagnose Santoma with imaging test. But there are some specific types of Santoma, for example, Achilles tendon Santoma and Santoma disseminatum that can be tested using a CT scan, MRI, and also USD. That's it for me. The next presentation will be continued by my friend. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sonia Putu Damikita Lafar Basuri. The last digit number is 036. So in diagnosing Santoma, the most important thing that we should remember is that Santoma is caused by an accumulation of cholesterol-rich substance. It means that every patient of Santoma mostly had a hyperlipidemia history. Each type of Santoma has a several differential diagnosis. So first, for the eruptive Santoma, we should differentiate from non langer hansel histios. For example, is Santoma disseminato, and then Santoma tosylation of Langerhans cell histiosis, and also disseminated granuloma annular. And then next, for the tuberosum Santoma type, we should differentiate it from erythema elevatum diotinum or multicentric reticulohistiosis. And then for the tendinose Santoma, we should distinguish from giant cell tumor of the tendon sheet and also rheumatoid nodule, subcutaneous granuloma annular, erythema elevatum duotinum. And last one, we should differentiate Santelasma type from stringomas, necrobiotic santogranuloma, sebaceous hyperplasia, and also palpebral sarcoidosis. Next. My name is Puturati Padmarini Gantarisari with the student ID number is 200251177. I will continue the presentations about the treatment of the Santom. So actually, action to remove Santoma can be done by topical cream therapy, energy-based device, systemic therapy, or surgery. In using topical cream therapy, the doctor often uses trichloroacetic acid or TCA. It is kind of destruction therapy that used topically 50 until 100%. A journal states that TCA therapy, if performed on patients with Santoma's palpebra, is more effective in patients with smaller lesions. However, it should be noted that when applied near the eyelids, it increases the risk of scar formation and subsequent development of Ectropion. The second therapy that is usually used is laser ablation, kind of energy-based therapy. The purpose is to provide targeted therapy in treatment. In XP especially, this therapy is proposed destruction of perivascular foam cells via thermal energy damage. Also, coagulation of dermal blood vessel leading to further blockage of lipid leakage, resulting in minimal recurrence. The next one is surgical. Surgical is also kind of therapy that used to cure Santomas and often produce excellent cosmetic outcomes. Techniques that can be used are classical blepharoplasty for a serial stepwise approach and the Lyrox technique for involving a modified blepharoplasty approach. However, in that technique, paralysis is reported to occur from 50 until 60% after primary or secondary excision. In addition, systemic therapy can also be used. Probucol and alirocumab are commonly used. In use, a journal reported that the case Santomas palpebra show a regression of Santomas. Santomas are also usually treated by treating the underlying disease. Mentioned in several journals, corrections of the underlying lipid disorder can lead to a good outcomes in many patients. That's all from me. The presentation will be continued by my friend. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Tipu Tanasi Wedantara with my last three-digit number is 173. In this session, I will try to explain about prognosis of Santoma. So, the prognosis of Santoma depends on various factors. And when we are trying to cure Santoma, the most important thing is the treatment of its systemic disease. Therefore, Santoma can be managed well with lifestyle and systemic therapy that can improve the patient's quality of life. 
Generally, Santa Malaysians can be completely healed with effective system management. But in some cases, uh, action may be needed to achieve a more effective cure rate. And based on a Danish pro- uh, prospective study of almost 13,000 subjects for, uh, for more than 20 years, the presence of Santelasma can be related to some diseases. Uh, for number one is myocardial infection, about uh, 48%, ischemic heart disease, about 38%, and the last one is ischemic disease of the lower extremities, is about 70%. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Next. Hello, my name is Justin Lordi Alin. I'm going to continue our presentation. I'm going to talk about the prevention of Santoma. Santomas can be prevented by managing its underlying disease. Most of Santomas are caused by lipid metabolism disorder, one of which is hypertriglyceridemia. So managing the hypertriglyceridemia can prevent Santoma. Management of hypertriglyceridemia can be done by pharmacological or non-pharmacological therapy. Non-pharmacological therapy is preferred in, in the prevention of Santoma because it, it is safer and minimizes the side effects of drugs. Non-pharmacological therapy such as lifestyle modification, the application of low-fat diet, adequate exercise or physical activity, and Uh, by routinely checking cholesterol levels are preferred. On the other hand, we can uh, do pharmacological therapy if non-pharmacological therapy is not enough or not successful. The first line therapy for hypertriglyceridemia is statins. In some conditions such as severe hypercholesterolemia, we, we can use combination drug therapy of statin plus acetamide and or bile acid resin. The use of fibrates or niacin is recommended to reduce the risk of acute pancreatitis in patients with severe hypertriglyceridemia. Next. Hello, my name is Putu Sherita Indipati Wi with the last student digit number 221. For the conclusion of Santoma are the presence of plaques or nodules related to an abnormalities of lipid accumulations in tissue, skin, or tendons. For the epidemiology, often in patients with systemic conditions, increase in patients above 50 years old, and the cases for males and females are equal. The signs and symptoms that we can find are often lesions in the form of macules, papules, yellowish nodules, or plaques, and we have to explore patients' underlying systemic conditions. The diagnosis of Santoma can be made by doing an anamnesis, physical examinations, histopathological examinations, lipid profile investigations, and also by doing an imaging test. For the prognosis of Santoma, it progresses progressively, can be cured, and the poor prognosis are depending on the patient's conditions, that is the underlying systemic conditions. For the treatment goals of Santomas, we have to prevent further damage, treat underlying conditions, and also improving patient's quality of life. These are the bibliography that we used. So thank you for watching Student Project of SKDB2. We hope that this student project can increase the knowledge of healthcare professionals about Santoma so that we can apply it in daily life or work discipline.